Hello folks, right, this is, as you can tell by the title, an inbox review of this gorgeous kit. So, uh, if you haven't watched my previous video, then I would recommend to go and check it out. But basically, it's my introduction of why I brought this kit. Basically, uh, I think you can tell by now, it's a series of videos I'm going to be doing of this build. Um, basically, in my last video, I said this was going to be my first wing look kit um, because of this little guy which is sat just behind me on this little pedestal. Uh, it's my first RE8 that I ever did, first ever first World War model so that's going to be my first wing nut kit so you can tell where that's going. Place that back down gently, it's kind of fragile but there we go. So anyway, I, I had a look online, it turns out there's no reviews of any Jawless kit let alone hardly um, any Wing that wings kits. There's not a many, which is surprisingly. There's a few scattered here and there, but none of the jewelers kits. So I thought to hell with it. I'm gonna show you what's inside the box. Um, yeah, <laughs> not really much there, but right? beautiful artwork, by the way. Uh, S. Anderson, is that right? 2016, I believe. I'm not too sure, but anyway, it's beautiful painting, by the way. I think it's acrylic. Oil. I think it's acrylic actually, so there we are. Anyways, um right, I'm gonna turn the camera around. Let's have a look at the box. Right to you, okay, so we're right, we're gonna start off with the box pretty much. Uh okay, so this kit was made in 2018 apparently. Uh so on the side here, got some information. Obviously, you know, don't eat it, don't drink it, don't sip it. Not recommended for 14 or under, so there we are. Uh, you've got all that information in English, French, Italian, German, Japanese, and Spanish, of course. Uh, it's got some, actually, it's the first time I've had a look at the side of this box. It's this proper first time I've had a proper look at this kit. Okay, uh, it says Wing Up Wings Limited, PO Box 15, blah, 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 New Zealand. So, yes, if you're not aware, uh, Peter Jackson is the main founder of Wing Up Wings. It's run by L Richard Alexander. Alexandra, sorry, and uh, I've forgotten the other bloke's name, I've forgotten his name now, I do apologise. But yes, it's run by them too, and this is a kit. Now, I must tell you, uh, the Jawless set, okay, obviously in the normal kit you get about five different marking options. The Jawless kits get two, so um, one for the Albstadt and one for the RE8, or the other aircraft all the way around. So, so these actual real stories, they are non-fictional stories. Um, these actually happened. I believe that's right, non-fictional. These actually happened, and this is the story that they played. So, in this case, I've had a look online. Uh, the aircraft from, I think it was Free Squadron, I think. I think it was Free Squadron, I don't know. Um, uh, it came down, so unexpected. Uh, how was that? That was taking look around the area, or something, and shot its engine out. The aircraft and how was that? Fell to the ground. It landed, and it was captured into RF markings, which is actually really good. I'll see the instruction will show you later on. So it's the same as the other boxes, Julius kits. You get obviously two aircraft, only one marking option for each, because it's based on a true story. So. This is what they are, but this is kind of like the dogfight double sets of from Airfix to Winglet Wings, so which is really a nice joy. Uh, like I said, it's one thirty second scale. Um, these are big kits, guys. What they build, so yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm just having a look around. Uh, the kit number for this one is three two eight zero four, I believe. So just inside here, I think that's it. Yeah, it doesn't say anywhere else really. Just have some nice artwork on the front there. And obviously in the front it gives you um, two, you can't really see that can you, but it gives you two profiles of what the aircraft look from the side and tells you the basic story of them. So that's that. Okay, so let's open the box. And... Okay. So straight away we can see uh, a um, wooden binder in the middle. Uh, this actually is showing up. Actually, can you see properly guys? I don't know. I might have just have to reach over. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah, you can see you can see clearly. 
Okay, so straight away you can see uh, two kits and this wooden binder in the middle. Um, one thing, I, d I have had a look at this already, but I haven't had a look inside the bags because they're all individually wrapped up and done. Uh, one thing I have noticed straight away, um, and another thing I need to mention, uh, the Duelist kits, one of the aircraft in the Duelist kit you cannot get anymore. The single production, because they went out of... Um, production some time ago. It's kind of weird to think that, but there we are. So, for this example, the RE8s, they don't make individually anymore. The Halberstadt, they still do. So this is why I wanted this kit to get two aircraft for the sake of, you know, so much. So, and it's the same for every single house. So, yes, you only get one market option, but then again, you'll get in a kit that they don't make anymore, which is actually really not too bad, as they say. So, straight away, the RE8 is in one great big bag with um, other bags in that bag so we got a couple of bags in a great big bag straight away okay like that and uh, the Halberstadt is a different story we have individually bags all done hmm. okay so that's supposed to be glued in place it was supposed to be glued in place but okay that must have come undone but there we are Okay, so we get the house that in a load of other bags, just like this. So, and we get some clear plastic. The instructions, which are very important. Now, another thing I did actually move when I was looking at this kit: the decals is all in one bag. Now they, and obviously our photo etched inside there. These were left like that. And sparks of things, they can't bend at the ends, it doesn't just quite fit right in the box. So I've moved it and stuck it lengthways flat down underneath the box. So, right here, I'll get the box out of the way and done with. I'm going to turn around, drop the camera down, and have a look at the proper stuff. Okay, so I'm having to put the light on, guys. It's actually really dark, in, actually. Let's see differences. See if that's any better. Yep, yeah, that's better. Okay, so here's the instruction, guys. There we go. Uh, a very, very glossy uh, coat on the front here. Um, obviously, it gives you the model specifications for the Halberstadt and the RE8. Gives you some nice details of the history of the aircrafts and such. Let's just have a look, see what it is. Uh, let's have a look. Okay. Right, it does tell you some information, obviously, the aircraft, as well as um, the colours and the specific, specific, yeah. Start again. specifications of the actual aircraft that are in this kit. So, we've got, um, like it says, for example, here, the upper surfaces of the RE8D4689 were finished in PC10, uh, protective covering number 10. Uh, the clear doped and varnish Irish linen lower surfaces. Metal cowling, appear to be a natural grey, blah blah blah, you get the picture. And it also gives you a information of where to get other things information from. And that's really it. Okay, straight away, I'll see upside down now, but there we are. Straight away we're given um, some park call outs. And it does say, very start here, now I've learned a lesson just by looking through the instructions. I haven't even touched the kit yet. And I'm still learning through the instructions. So have a proper, proper read through these guys before starting your kit. Because they are loaded with stuff. But there we go. So it gives you all the warnings. Obviously not eat it, no drink it. Uh, that's a weird one. you got an elephant. I've just noticed this element. Cement for metal. I've never seen that one before. Extra strong? I do, I do not know, but there we go. Uh, you got your call outs here, you got your maze basic colours, obviously your lettering. Uh, you got Tamiya, Humbrol, and what's that one? Fed Federal Standard. Okay, so they're the basic colours, and if you like me, I like using the Tamiya paints now. Uh, Humbrol, I don't touch anymore. It's horrible stuff but there we are that's all your colours so that's your list of call outs what you need 
Uh, you got your part call-ups as well. Uh, first one for the Halberstadt, uh, the decals for the Halberstadt and the RE8. What decals you don't want to, and what decals and what parts you don't want to use. Bulks of things. All the decals obviously are going to be used. All the photo actually going to be used. Only a few decals. These lozenges they fit onto the wings of the Halberstadt there. Uh, there we are. Quite a few parts going from Halberstadt, which I've just noticed, but there we are. That's my phone going off, do you apologise? Um, back to the RE8 and the back here, parts not using. So, this sprue here is quite, this is the clear sprue. There's some parts here that clear, that show that you're not using them. Which is absolutely weird as hell, because they look really large parts, so I don't know what they were intended for, or whatever, but... There we go. So, right, moving on. So, you start off the instructions. Uh, this is one the cockpit, so it's in chapters, but lots of things now. Um, okay, so the first aircraft we start off with the instructions is the German Halberstadt. Straight away, you go in your lower, uh, lower floor parts, going in straight away, you're gluing and removing some parts for your version. Fitting in some control surfaces and very nicely a radio that's fitted at the back here. Now that's the thing, it looks like some decals is it going on the back here. Uh, okay, so this is this is an old thing where I say read your instructions carefully. This is a Telefugen Type D wireless, okay. Now it does say here, not carried on 1534217 when captured. So this version didn't have in your thing, it didn't have a radio, which is weird because it mostly did, but there we are. So that's something, it's like little important information as well. Uh, yeah, remove if not use an amplifier, which fits into there. Um, yeah, simple little things. You got wireless aerial, these are the frameworks fitting in. I was meant to show you before, you got the seats going into the bottom here, and you get your frame for your engine. So simple little things like that, and which I've noticed. And also another thing as well that um, the seat harnesses that actually show you full colour what they would look like, which is really really nice, guys. I do like this stuff. Obviously, going through your different callouts of what to use, what paint colours to use, and everything else where parts go. Basic instructions, really. But there we are. But it doesn't talk for it. It shows you as well. I mean, look at the side side here. This shows you how it should look when all done, even in colour. And it's a very simple cockpit for Halberstadt, I will admit. And then you've got your two fuselage halves here, and even so, your rigging, if you choose to put it together. And what diameter to use, and so forth. Next up, we go for the engine, telling you what parts go on which. The cylinders going on to the actual framework here. We've got some different... Uh, oil filters, I think these are going on too. And then once again, it shows you in full colour how the engine should look, what colours going through here, and that. And even at the bottom here, a actual photo of a Halberstadt engine. Uh, 108, 108 horsepower, let I'll start again. 108 horsepower Daimler Benz Mercedes D, D3A engine. And it's a detail showing you here. That's pretty good, nice. So again, you go into your fuselage halves. Um, okay, so right, that page shows you what colours were. These are the actual modelling stages. So you do a bit of work there to go into the framework. You've got your MG casing going in there. All fitted in quite nicely, sandwiched together. And so it fits some parts here and there. Now, here's the fun bit. The Spandau, the LMG 15 or 8. Fitted through there, the firing arc, you get some nice photo etch to make the cooling system in the front there, as well as your gun sight fitting in there. And uh, yeah, so you've got once again more photos of how the house shot looks when it's made and such. Uh, but lots of things you've got uh, fuel tank details underneath, as well as some bomb racks, lots of it here and there. Next up, you've got your. Um, Wings going on, let's say you've got the wings going here. Detail wise, going here, you've got some parts fitting in for your um, yeah, engine work and that lot for your cowlings. Going there, you've got some inspection covers going on. 
And then we start off with your turret rings fitting in here, and then your so your struts fitting in very nicely. Once again, loads of photo, not loads of photo, sorry, not photo etch. Go on here, loads of detail work for the radiators on top of here. Your exhaust system going there, so you can tell these go. These are the full works. These are the bees knees, really, as they say. Going through all the different parts, you got some really con uh, aileron control fitting in there. You have two lower wings, then you're followed by your prop, your rear gun at the back here, showing you this version, and also some flare pistols, casings, some grenades going onto the system in the side there. Because believe it or not, these aircraft did drop grenades if you didn't know. And also your rigging diagram for your aircraft. Okay, uh, it does say here rigging material not supplied, so use EZ line or. Uh, Uchi van der Rossen line. It said, uh, if you choose to rig your model, please drill out all location holes with a 0 0.5 drill bit to the depth of at least one millimeter to remove the plate, paint, and remove an adhesion. Uh, do yourself a favor and make the ring as simple as possible by using stretch elastic material like EZ line, etc., and not trying to replicate turnbuckles. Okay, but then turnbuckles do look nice on that. There we go. Okay, so like I said, you only get one uh, marking option. I still see, see if you're still recording, guys. Yes, you are. This is a very long tutorial. So straight away, like I said, one marking option. Um, how much that C2? Oh, sorry, C12, uh, blah, 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 what number? Uh, what squadron? 9th of June, 1918. And it's got a nice, weird, weird camouflage going on in here. So you've got a very nice, attractive white and black tail, followed by its lozenges across the underside and the top wing, and a very yellow underside, by looks of things. A very yellow. Hmm. Now, that's simple enough, but then the fuselage, we only get one side of it. You don't get two. But then again, they, they could say that you can use these photos to the side to try and locate where things are. Uh, this camouflage for this aircraft, the actual fuselage, is absolutely difficult as hell by looks of things. Um, we got uh, the main colour option is made up of these markings, so it's literally spray dots all over the aircraft, which sounds actually pretty fun. But there you go. So, like I said, you get photographs with the aircraft of when it was captured. Uh, some detail work going on in there. Okay, so you move on to your second project, which is now, of course, the RE8. So we start off with some uh, framework of the engine going on here, some framework of the cockpit fitting in. Like I said, more photos again show you the colours of the seats, what the aircraft was like interior. So these guys have actually gone and done your work for you. You don't have to go online and find all these reference material. It's in this book. No problem. And here we go. Something that I didn't really think of when I was look, having a look. It actually gives you um, some very nice detail work for the um, instrument panel and the framework at the side here. So you've got, by the looks of it, you've got a bomb sight fitting into the side there because it was the bomb sight was fitted into the actual um, pilot's position, not the gunner's position on this aircraft. Once it gets telling you all, it's actually got this look. Instrument, what's to say? Instrument, broad lamp, and electrical wires. So this is actually showing you the colours of the wires that were fitted around here. Actual photographs. Once again, beautiful, beautiful detail. So once again, you got your markings and your decals going there for your compasses and that lot. More work going into the framework here, including your rudder and aileron control. Once again. Frame wall, frame work being fitted in, all that being fitted in, the MG mounts, the guns at the side here. You've got some more seats going in, your rear gunner seat and your pilot seat. It looks like a deck chair from us, but there we go. Fuel tank going in, you actually have a photograph, um, sorry, photograph, a camera. What camera, what camera produces, but there we go, same thing. Um, it does also say that uh, camera type L... Um, Probably not carried by D4689 on the 9th of June 1918. So it does say that it probably wasn't carried, 
but you can have it if you want, which I might do actually, but there we go. It also gives you a rigging diagram then of what the actual aircraft um, looked inside. It also finds a lot of work. A lot of work going on in there. Uh, another thing I need to mention is that it's so detailed, it actually tells you what colours to paint your braces from for your framing, which is weird once again. And then once again, an actual photograph of what the cockpit should look like, and it looks all wood and brown. There we go. And then an actual photograph of the aircraft itself. Why not? Uh, once again, you get into your 150 horsepower uh, RAF for a engine being fitted into here. So actually, once again, detail-wise, showing you what colours to paint the parts, all that a lot, and what it should look like at the very end. That being installed into there, we exhaust your great big love exhaust sticking out there. Once again, colours of your harnesses fitted in there. Holes of what to drill out here and there, blah blah, what colour it should look like. Sandwiched in, and that all being fitted together, including your MG mounts, your Vickers Mark 1 on the front there. Some actual and different detail side here. Uh, lots of things that even says open up holes to allow the control surfaces going through your tail skids. Elevators, rudder control, VIN fitted in there. Bottom wing fitted by the top wing on struts here and there going through. And it also gives you some tips as well. Uh, place model in empty box lid as shown while the glue dries. That's very good. Very nice. Also some more detail of how the rigging looked in the aircraft. Uh, like again, it shows you the additional information, your landing gear fitted in, some bomb racks if you want to include them, include some framework for your camera, photographs of the actual aircraft and landing gear fitted there. Oh, excuse me, when you on them. Uh, your exhaust fitted into the bottom, well not exhaust, but oil fields, whatever. Now it's a nice thing as well, this um, lug of a, I say lug, a actual framework, what, well, fuselage halves, cowling halves fitted in. It says here, drill holes for more detail, which is really impressive. Uh, 0 0.75 drill bit, wow, okay. Last of all, your prop going off and your filter going on the front there. What does it say here? Uh, Daimler built cowl details for brown and barlow carburettors. Note the unpainted aluminium side plates for the RF A4 engine. Okay, so that's really it. Uh, followed by your rear gunner, the most important thing, fitting in there. Some photo actually going in there to make the um, locking mechanisms fit in there. You, you only get one Mark II Lewis machine gun fitted in here because that aircraft only had one air one. You could fit two if you want, but you'll have to do some homework. Parts fitted for the exhaust stacks, and last but not least, your specifications of your rigging. And that is it, folks. Apart from, I say last bit, your marking option is RAFE. It's from, yeah, I was right, Free Squadron. Sick night for June 1918. This is the aircraft I bought down the Halberstadt. And it is, shockingly, which I later, well, found out the other day, it is the exact same aircraft as what I built at so many years ago. There you go. Different colour, it's absolutely broken to hell, but there we go. And then followed by some actual photographs of the aircraft and all its major glory. And last but not least, we've got some actual photographs of the captured Halberstadt, how it used to, how it's now looked. It was flown back to England to be shown out really to the public. And then we got some biographies of the authors, which is really nice. So, yeah, and then obviously your parts for your aircraft. So, yes, like I said, it actually does go through quite a lot of detail, guys. It's not more or less a book, but like, it also shows you the work that these guys put into. And I have to say, I know I need to have to move this camera about a bit more, but it does show the appreciation that people go to put in these kits, which is really... Really look good. Okay, right. Let's on to move on to the next part. 
Okay, so going on to the other parts. Here is the decals, they're all on the bag. One great big bag box things. Uh, one thing to note, these bags aren't resealable really guys, not one bit. I, I don't think I want to get these open because I feel like it will uh, ruin the thing, but you can see the decals compared to my hands are humongous. So you get your full lozenges for your aircraft at the back there, for your Halbstadt, you get Marcus for your RF roundels and your Luftwaffe. Are they Luftwaffe? Decals were they called Luftwaffe back in the day? No idea. At the back here you do get your photo etch parts at the back there. Um, this is surprising actually, not a lot of photo etch parts going on to, to these projects. Not a lot at all. But there you go, I'm not risking opening the bag just yet because I don't want to damage the decals pretty much. Um, I'm sorry it's how I am guys, but there we go. Right here, we're going to start off with, let's have a look. I'm going to do this fashionably order. We're going to start off with the Halberstadt. Okay. Right, so like I said, all these loose bags that are in the box are pretty much here. And, right, I'm just trying to think. Let's get this box organised so we can put things back how they work. So, we're not messing around with stuff. Right here, yeah, sorry about that. Right, so we're going to have a look at some parts. We're going to start with the main parts. Fuse large halves going in there. Okay, open this up. Okay, so first time I'm doing this, live on camera, open up my first Wing That Wings bag. Okay, my first impressions. Hmm. Okay, I know you might think I'm sad doing this, but this is my first feel of a kit, a wing nooks kit. I've never, like I said, I've just had the privilege to purchase one, and I have to say, it feels incredible. Not, I have to, am I actually in focus with you guys? Yeah, I am. Uh, the detail. It's absolutely astonishing. Um, the fuselage large halves and the the elevator at the back here, it's all in one piece, but I don't know if you can see. Just there, there is a gap in between the elevator and the actual fins themselves, as well as that. That is astonishing. I've never seen that before. Another thing is you do have some stitching work on the... Oh no, I'm just going to bring you in. There you go. So you get some detail work including some parts here and there. Wow, so let's have a look at this elevator. Okay, so like I said, you can see the stitching on the side there. And yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. You can see the part now while I was on about how it's differently moulded, but in still one piece. Some detail for your Radiator there on the front piece, your prop. That is really it, guys. Wow. There we go. Sorry, sorry about the noise. I'm refocusing y'all. Just go put this back in the bag so we're not losing anything. Put that back in the box. Out of the way. Just one thing, I'm doing this carefully, guys, so I'm not losing any parts. Anything. Okay, so let's start off the next part. Wings. That's just falling down. Okay, wings. One great big sprue. Hmm. Wow, same again, guys. Uh, it's just a tiny hint of flash here, but that's it. Uh, the, once again, guys, uh, detail. Once again, it's really nice. There is stitching work going into these tail fins. Which I really did not expect. I really did not expect the stitching work to even be on there, including underneath the actual compass. Just there. Okie dokie. Uh, just having a quick look. So, like I said, you've got locating pins on the inside here. 
Now, one thing I have noticed, I'm just going to refocus you once again. I, I am sorry about this, guys. But if you can see on these location pins, these are for the, um, doo -doo 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 -doo, the struts side here. You can see there's a tiny little hole next to it. That hole is for your turnbuckles or your rigging, whichever you choose to do, which is absolutely astonishing once again. And don't we can see the actual stretching effect of the stitching across the wings? Wing nuts, I have to say. I have to say, absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, guys. There we go. So you get the condition of the parts. Brilliant. Perfect. I'm just going to put that back in there. Next big sprue. All the detail parts, all the tiny, tiny little parts going on in there. Okay, so I'm just having a quick look at them. Don't want, at the same time, I don't want to open them because they're so detailed, but at the same time, I do. No, I think I'm going to keep them in because I don't want to lose any parts, guys. So I'm not building this project just yet. Now, one thing I've noticed sorry about the flashy bags, you even get stick grenades at the side there. How weird and wonderful is that? Your framework for your cockpit going there, once again, all brilliantly done. Uh, you've got your MGs fitted in the side there. You've got some flares. <laughs> this is absolutely brilliant, guys. Wow. So you get the part this the genuine sort of parts there. Uh, the last two sprues, we have uh, your engine parts here. Once again, you have different versions of props in there. There are all the cylinders. That lot. So this is just sprues dedicated to the engine emplacements which is nice and we've got some more parts going here we got the actual these are the aircraft MG's and the cowlings being fitted on the front here instrument panel parts your MG magazines and last but not least clear pieces not many clear pieces on first world warcraft but there we go okay that is the Halberstadt reviewed and done so what do I think? Yes, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Not as many parts as I thought there would be, but it should go down a treat. Right here, guys, next parts the RE8. As I said, all in one great big bag. Now, like I said before, this um, obviously this is the first time looking at this kit. This kit is the one I'm going to start building first. Now, the two, because like I said earlier, it's my favourite and first aircraft of World War 1, blah, you get the picture anyway. Um, also, like I said, they don't make this kit anymore, so <laughs> this is kind of a limited kit now. So, I'm just having a look how you open it. That's one. Could be ripped down the side. Okay, as you just witnessed, that's that come out of the bag. So no, it's just lost its value it's from 100 down to 20. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, right, uh, okay. Just have a look what parts are which. Okay, do 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 do. Right. Now I'll start off with this one first, the main fuselage halves. Okay. That's even open there, is it? Yes, yeah, that's. Okay, okay. Right. Wow. Okay. Okay, guys, right. Same as before, uh, the fuselage halves are here. Throw that bag just down there. Same as before, uh, fuselage halves, stitching, and important canvas stretching here and across the fuselage 
is spot on. Let me bring this up. Let me show you. Okay. There we can see just in the light there if I turn it. You can actually see some canvas work going across the sides of the fuselage here. And then you've got some nice stitching and rigging all the way across the aircraft and the airframe. Absolutely unbelievable guys. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Okay. Let me refocus you again. Sorry about that. Sorry about the light also. That's the lowest setting it's got. And it does produce a glare, but which is not really what I want, but there we go. Right, so I'm just gonna try and put this in the bag so without even attempting to break it. Come near you. Okay. That's that one. Okay, next screw, watch one. Okay for this one. Okay, same again with this one. This is the elevators and wing bottom wing belts of things. Going on here. You do have some nice once again some nice detailed parts being fitted onto the bottom here. All beautiful once again. All the stitch I think you get the picture. The stitching is let me I'm gonna should bring you up again. Like I said, once again, all the rigging, stitching, and even location pin marks for your rigging are going in all across there. Like so. Now these are the parts we were talking about earlier, the big clear parts, but these are the plastic parts. So I think there's a two different versions for aircraft. Wonderful work, guys. Brilliant, okay. Refocus you again. Sorry. Sorry about the noise. And the refocus and not refocusing of you. Okay. Right, is that one done? Uh so look at this one. Okay, these have got your covers and some struts and other parts here and there. Okay, uh, once again guys, brilliant, brilliant detail going on in here. You've got your prop going on just there. The actual detail on the prop on the nuts is actually really special. Let me bring you up again. Uh, like I said earlier, the holes that they said to drill out are all perfectly in alignment with lots of things. Uh, you do get some different variants to build of the engine parts like I said there the, the nuts go on top of there oh bring it once again okie dokie sorry bet this is wearing the battery out that really really down okay um, the other parts I don't think I'll get them out because they're so fragile but from what you can see, I'll bring this up again. So once again, you do get some lovely detail. I especially like, oh, it's a bit weird, I had a light in my face. I especially like these parts. You've got, they're beautifully detailed. If you saw how beautiful they are, which you are, duh. The Vickers gone there, the camera mount. This is what I like the most, the the MGs, the Vickers, sorry not Vickers, the Lewis guns, the ammunition rounds, they were drum mags, they had beautiful arches, instrument panel being fitted in the front there, you also have seats going on in there, uh, I'm just having a look. Uh, okay, this is not expected, but your seat just here, I don't know if you can see that properly or not, 
but it does have um, the pattern in it but it's not drilled out properly which is expected because it's such a fragile thing but yes includes at the back here some more Vickers, not Vickers, Lewis gun mounts. I keep getting them not mixed up. Yes, all beautiful and even exhaust holes drilled out. Okay, so the last couple of parts we have. Oh, actually, it's quite a few parts. Okay, so we got one engine, Sprue E. One engine. We also have, uh, what do we have here? We have two sprues in one bag. It looks like... We have some spare parts, smart swings, we've got some spare, the wheels, the treads, some different versions there, box of things. I'm not too sure about that one. Um, your clear parts, these are clear parts I said we're not we're using. Great big parts actually in there. And um, this set is a standard uh, set they give out, I believe. Um, here we go, the RFC armament set. They give these out differently, separately, the armaments and the aircraft. Um, it's the same as the um, the FE2B I've got upstairs. The same, it's the same sprue pretty much. And then obviously you have your parts for your gunners. And you do get a fair amount of arm race there. So there we are guys. Okay, so what do I think guys? There's not much more I can say really apart from these kits. I uh, have to say, first time getting a wing nuts kit out of the bag. Very impressed. Absolutely impressed guys what I've seen in terms of detail wise. I don't. I can understand now why people have the hype of wing nut wings. And the fact they are so expensive to purchase and the camera is leaning at a weird angle. But it's weird. But I can understand well why people have a hype about them and they're so darn nice just to even look at without even doing anything. It's just weird you sat an angle like that. It's weird. Anyhow, that is a review of the Duelist kit from Winglet Wings. It is the RE8 and the Halberstadt C2. So it's a CL2, sorry, if you river counters out there. But there we go. I'd say very much impressed, I keep saying. Would I recommend it for a build? Well, the person who's starting off, no, not really, if I'm honest, but it could be because of how much parts go nice together, especially if you spend all that money, you want everything perfect. But, like I said, it is brilliant to put together, and you're still leaning, which is weird. None of perfect for must be my dodgy tripod, but there you go. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching. Happy modeling. Um, there should be some videos out shortly, I believe. I need to do some editing. There we go. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. I shall see you all again shortly. So, with that, cheers and goodbye for now. <laughs>